Arizona will head to USC this weekend with a 3-2 record after dropping their game to Washington 31-24. Despite the loss, the defense had a statistically significant performance, holding the Husky offense to season-low marks in passing yards, passing yards per attempt, total offense, and points. Two of the coaches responsible for this defensive performance join us now on the Wildcat Rundown, and they also so happen to be two of the best defensive players to have ever played for the Wildcats. What's up guys and welcome back to the Wildcat Rundown. This is episode six, which means we are halfway through the regular college football season. And to celebrate that, we have two big time guests joining us today. They are two of the most iconic players to ever put on the U of A uniform. They are two college football hall of famers and they are two men who are continuing to impact this program through coaching now. Coach Ricky Hunley and Coach Chuck Cecil. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. <laughs> thank you. Was it just a uh, uh, luck that it was this podcast six? You know what? Six. No, I, I had it a little planned for this. <laughs> then we gotta have to do episode eight and nine. Yeah, because we gotta do eight and nine for him. Because I'm up, I'm up episode six, so he's episode eight and nine. There you go. Perfect. I know our Wildcat family is gonna be so excited to hear from you guys, and they know so much about your football careers here and in the NFL. So today, I really want to hear about your journeys to the U of A how you guys fell in love with football, the other sports you played, um, and just what you guys have been up to since your time in the NFL, really. So to start, Coach Hunley. Oh, okay. Something a lot of people might not know about you is that you had the opportunity to play a whole nother sport at the professional level. When did you start playing baseball and how did you balance that with football while growing up? I was about six years old, seven years old, and the kids come knocking on the door and say, hey, we need another player. And they asked me to come out and, and play baseball with them. So I started playing baseball. And, and, and the funny thing about it, you know, I didn't have any control. They made me a pitcher because I could throw it fast. And, uh, and, and I really, you know, took a liking to it because, you know, every year I would start the Little League season off throwing a no-hitter. And my mom liked the fact that she would read about me playing baseball in the newspaper. And so baseball was really my first love. I mean, I was just, I mean, and I was a power hitter. I mean, it was a home run or it was a strikeout. But, you know, when I hit it, I hit it far. Uh, so, and I stuck with it. And in, in high school, we didn't have a very good baseball team. And in my senior year, we turned things around. We won the regional. You know, we got into the state playoffs. And, uh, and I got drafted out of high school by the Pirates. You know, there was a guy by the name of Branch Ricky Jr., he was the son of Branch Rickey and uh, that drafted Jackie Robinson. And uh, they drafted me, and I remember they flew me down. First time I've ever been on a plane, they flew me down to Bradenton, Florida. And uh, and that's where we had camp. It was, uh, you know, rookie camp. And all the kids were from the Dominican Republic. And nobody spoke <laughs> English but Ricky. And, uh, you know, and so, but they give you 72 oh, hours yeah. to come down there or you forfeit your legion eligibility. So you have to make a decision. And uh, and I had a good camp, and they offered me a contract. And uh, and the contract was only for four weeks because school started. And they said, you can continue to play football. I had already accepted the scholarship to play football. You continue to play football, and um, we'll give you $40,000 for four weeks. You know, like $40,000. It didn't make any sense to me because we didn't have anything. We grew up poor. So. But I was scared to death because all the kids – you know, nobody spoke English but me. And I was like, no, nah, I'll go home. <laughs> <laughs> I went home. <laughs> and so I got here and, and Coach Kendall said, you know, uh, Coach Mason told me that I could play baseball if I wanted. Coach Kendall gave me an inv invite to come out and try out as a walk-on. And for that one semester, myself and Kevin Ward, we were on the baseball team, you know. Mm. And it was because of that opportunity to play both baseball and football that you ended up here, right? Absolutely. That was a decision maker right up in the Wildcat Club when I'm looking down watching Terry Francona and those guys play. And uh, and I asked Coach Mason, could I use the phone? Call my mom. And I said, cancel Notre Dame, Nebraska, and Ohio State. I'm going to Arizona. And the rest is history. And there you go. Yeah. Coach Cecil, you played baseball in high school too. <laughs> what was it about football yes. that had your heart? Or did you ever – 
consider playing another sport in the college level? Uh, well, I did actually consider playing baseball. Um, and I actually thought about playing baseball here when I, when I got here as well. But uh, I don't know. I just enjoyed hitting people more than baseballs. So uh, you did a good job I, I, that. I chose football. Yeah. <laughs> you did a real good job of hitting people. <laughs> Oh man, I've been seeing you get a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Sleds. And, and, uh, when was it that you started to play football, and what was it about defense and hitting people that you loved? Well, I actually grew up. I mean, uh, I was a, court, a quarterback and played, um, you know, just on the playground and everything, and and then uh, played it in when I was a freshman in high school. It was the first time I got to put on pads and everything and then uh I wound up playing corner for our team in in Hanford which is in the middle of the valley in in uh California and then I moved and we moved to San Diego and for my senior year and so I was gonna again I was competing to play quarterback and we had the spring game uh, you know, the spring before, and, and I was there for that. And, and the guys, well, can anybody play DB? Because we've got to split the teams up. And I said, well, I, I played DB last year. And he says, well, so anyway, I, I hit like five or six guys. We had no pads on or nothing. It was just, you know, like a little scrimmage kind of thing. And I, I actually ran into a couple people and, and after practice, and, and the DB coach came over and he goes, he goes, here, back pedal down this line. He goes, break that way he goes Chuck I don't know how to tell you this but your days at quarterback are over you are now a safety <laughs> and literally uh that's how I my senior year was the first time I played safety and and uh, Ray Hernandez was the the coach at uh Helix High School in San Diego and literally we had four consecutive safeties from the from Helix that played here at the University of Arizona. There's 15 straight years where there was a starting safety for us. Uh, Alan Durden, me, then uh, uh, Jeff Hammerschmidt, and Brandon Sanders. And so they were wow. all Helix High School guys. So uh, that's how I kind of got recruited here was because of Alan Durden before me. And um, anyway, wound up walking on and, uh, you know, the, you know, my life was a, a fantasy. It was a dream. And, uh, you know, and I owe it all to the University of Arizona. It wasn't all a fantasy. Uh, it was hard work. <laughs> I can still see him out there, out there hitting the sled because he could not make the bell ring on the sled. You know, all the linebackers would hit the sled, hit the sled, and bing, and ring the bell, ring the bell. And Chuck could not ring the bell because he was only 150 pounds. I was, maybe. I was 150 maybe. pounds when I got here. I couldn't and ring the, the bell. And the sled used to just like, beat him up. And, and he was so <laughs> perceived. He'd go out every day and hit the sled and hit the sled and hit the sled. You know, and it's like, yeah. it was just hilarious to see when he finally <laughs> rang that bell. Oh, yeah. Ring that bell. He was baby. hooked. He was, like, yeah, was just ringing bells on receivers. <laughs> In need of work, baby. There you go. Uh, ring my bell. Run it back. <laughs> <laughs> From your guys' recruiting experience and coming to the U of A, what did you learn that you now implement when you're recruiting guys here? You know what? It, it, it's funny because it, when we have the recruiting meetings and, you know, had a when the new guys come in and I say it every time and I literally it, it's just get the kids on campus because I remember when I came on my recruiting trip here I was like I, this is where I'm going to school I, I, I this is this is it. it 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 just once you are here and you see the campus and you're around the kids it's just it's where you want to go to school I mean, it's it's what college college education, getting a college education. This is what it's supposed to be like. It's not uh, it's not about just getting the school. It's also the the social aspect and and just going from being a boy to being a man. I mean, that's what college is, and and uh, 
this is as good as it gets, really and truly. And that's why I always say, I mean, it's literally, I tell the guys, just get the kids on campus. It sells itself. We, you don't really don't have to recruit them. It's like the university does it itself. You know, just, just, I mean, everything here is the, the school. You can walk to all your classes. I mean, you can get a great education. It's as good as it gets from business to uh, astronaut, uh, astronomy. I mean, it, it's amazing. And then, uh, you know, the, the athletics is fantastic as well. So it's just, uh, it's where you want to go to school. Yeah. Well, you know, when I, when I came here to school, I mean, I, I'd never been on an airplane other than that baseball trip. <laughs> and, and I flew all the way across the country, and I, I had no intention of coming to Arizona. None. It was not even on the radar. And I remember Bob Davies coming out to visit me at home because my high school coach, linebacker coach, Mo Oldenweather, walked on here in the 60s. He said, you need to take a trip and just go visit Arizona. Just go visit. I said, I don't know anything about Arizona. Why won't I go to Arizona? <laughs> you know, and everybody's recruiting me. I mean, I'm, I'm getting letters from Notre Dame, Nebraska, Ohio State, USC, and, and all of these things that you fantasize about as a kid. But now uh, it's time to take those trips. And so I'm taking the trips where I have to drive because I'm afraid to fly. So I drive to Virginia. I drive to Carolina. I drive to Maryland. And uh, I had a visit scheduled to go to Ohio State. And my friend Sean Gale, his brother Jimmy Gale, they were, uh, Jimmy Gale was on the team. Me and Sean was going to take the trip together. And uh, they had a snowstorm. Well, the week before I drove to Virginia Tech, they had a snowstorm. We skidded off the road, hit a mailbox. <laughs> Nobody got hurt, but it was just, you know, the thought of me landing in a plane in the snow, I can just see myself just. So I canceled, I postponed that trip. And I. <laughs> told Coach Oldenwell, I said, look, I'll take that trip to Arizona because I found out my mother's sister was stationed here at Fort Huachuca. And so I get to see family. And uh, so I'll go see them. I don't even go see the school. <laughs> I think. And I get out here, and it's 85 degrees in February. I had to pull my Letterman's jacket off because it was so hot. There's beautiful palm trees and mountains and clear skies. And I'd never seen anything like that before. You know, in Petersburg, Virginia, you don't have mountains. You know, you're halfway between Virginia Beach and, you know, and wherever. Uh, and now I'm still thinking that I'm going to Ohio State the next week. I'm not interested because I'd already, <clears throat> you know, I had my mind made up. And then the baseball situation convinced me. I mean, beautiful girls and baseball. I was like, <laughs> all I need is t shirt, <laughs> flip flops, and shorts. And I can do this because we didn't have money. Mom didn't have money to. You know, provide all this stuff for us year round. You go to a cold weather place, you got that winter, summer clothes. And uh, and when I got here, I mean, it was just awesome. And so, I committed on the trip, you know, and and and, and I never looked back. And actually, I had an opportunity to leave because uh, they put the school on probation, right smack in the middle of the spring when they they, they fired the coach, and uh, and I could have left. And I was like, no, I made a commitment. I stayed with my commitment. And then, you know, I came out, my brother Lamont followed, and my brother Kevin followed, and, you know, and now I think I have more family members here than actually in California or Virginia, you know. <laughs> but the, Arizona's home. It took me 39 years to get back here. I've always wanted to be here um, because just the good times and the good feelings you have. And when you walk around campus, I take a walk every day, and I, you know, my daily walk, and I walk campus, and it just reminds me of the good times that we had here because it's like you say, I walk campus and it looks the same. I mean, the buildings, there's a, some few yeah, new buildings, geez, but you know, it was as beautiful, that mall with the palm trees and the grass. It was all the same, and I can still see it. You know, it, so it's all great memories. I would read that you both had said on different occasions that you always felt like you were going to come back here to the University of Arizona, especially after you both got into coaching. Why was that? Chuck beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, again, I, I I love my time here, and uh, you know I was walk on 148 pounds my initial way in here at the U of A, and and uh, was fortunate enough to play in the NFL for for eight years, and then coach in the NFL for, I mean, again, uh, a fairy tale, 
you know, that came true. And I literally, it's funny because when I was a defense coordinator in Tennessee for the Titans and I told my wife, I go, you realize we're going back to Tucson at some point. And she's actually from here and she's like, yeah, right. And I, I go, no, 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 I, I, I got to go back. I, I got to I gotta pay it back, you know, kind of thing. And I go, I just, and she's like, yeah, right, okay, whatever. And I go, okay. And, and, and so now we're here and she's like, okay, you told me. Okay, you said it. And like, no, it was just, first and foremost, love Tucson. I mean, I just, I love the people here. I love the university. The Just everything about it is just fantastic. And then uh, just the fact of just being able to come back and try and pay it back a little bit, I think it was uh, is just, uh, just a true blessing, really and truly. How special is it that your daughter is now here too this semester? And the fact that my daughter is here is even more. Staying uh, in the dorm. It's almost comical. She li- <laughs> she, she, she's, she's in the dorm in the stadium. She's on the other side. I see her more now than I did when she was in high school. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. No, it's, uh, yeah, she just started this year. And uh, it's funny because even when we lived in Tennessee and then in, in St. Louis and L.A. and everything, and, and she's always, she was always like, oh, I'm going to go be a wild cat. And I, I'm like, I was like, yeah, okay, great. Yeah. You know, and then. And uh, now that we live here, she was like, she actually looked a couple other places, but this is where she always wanted to go. And so she, and she's, she's excited to be here and happy about it. So it's, it, that makes me obviously very happy as well. So it's, uh, it's uh, blessed to say the least. Yeah, awesome. And then Coach Hunley, <laughs> you're with your brothers. Did you ever feel like you were gonna be back here with as you just said, more family than you I, even I had always here when had you came here. A, a goal of getting back here, and you know, because every time I came back, you know, for football games or homecoming, or you know, or they were honoring me for retiring a jersey, it, it was always a great time. And you know, and I've always had all my brothers. You know, even when I first built a house here, it was me at 22 years old, and and it was me and my brothers, and we lived up there in the foothills, been finished there, and we just had a blast, you know. <laughs> and so, to come back and, and 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 hang out with those guys, and you know, I think I did things in reverse because I did tailgating with them first. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't get to tailgate when you're a ball player, but uh, mm-hmm. it's it is it is a great time, and uh, I look forward to seeing them. Like every weekend, they're there. You know, I see them on the field before the game, and. Uh, uh, it's a it's a it's a great time and so to come back here you know actually i think it's two coaches ago you know jet was a candidate for the head job and uh and then he was like oh, coach Allen, you know we need to get back to arizona i'm like yeah that'd be great <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's like you drink with you i mean it's just a blessing to have a guy who worked with us as a ga at florida that called me up and offered me a job at my alma mater and, and to be here, so you know, it's just a blessing in disguise to be able to come back and be around good people and uh, and be with Chuck. You know, this, this is my <laughs> dude right here. You know, be back with Ricky. Yeah. I wish I could play the, golf like him. The though, living you know, legend. You know, the I, living I, legend. You know, actually, every time I play golf with you, I play my best. <laughs> you know, he's a good coach. <laughs> what was your first impression of Coach Cecil? <laughs> you mean as a player or as a coach? Both. Either one. Well, as a player, man, I was a fan because you know, you know, we're defensive mm. players. We hit people. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I had five hundred and sixty-six tackles, yeah. and he was right behind me. You yeah. know, as a safety, and uh, but I, I just never seen anybody who just was just so violent and physical with their body the way he would just <laughs> lay people out and don't say anything to piss him off because now it's on I mean, you know it's not gonna be over <laughs> until i get you and, and he was so small you know he's so tiny you know like 170 pounds maybe i think he got that was when you're, you're biggest right yeah you know it's not like you're at 238 like me you know <laughs> <laughs> and that was my lightest <laughs> uh. but uh you know he, he i mean He's every bit as good as a coach as he was a player. I mean, the guy, you know, he can relate to his players. You know, they gravitate to him for knowledge. And, uh, you know, he's been there, done that, and, and that's the key. You know, he's a living example of what greatness is. You mm-hmm. know, he's my hero. Oh, stop. Yeah. Oh, you're so full of it, so seriously. 
<laughs> Coach guy. Cecil, same question for you. What was it like watching Coach Hunley play? Well, you got you, again. I and I got here. I was obviously a little undersized and everything, and that it was his senior year. You shouldn't have been I, here. You were walking on. Uh, yeah, I walked on. I, I had no business to even being here. And just watching him and, and, again, talking about violent, I mean, bringing it. I mean, again, he was 240, 35, 40 pounds. And, I mean, downhill, bringing it. And it was just like, oh, man. I, I mean, for me, I'll never not see him as that. I mean, he's... Clearly, a little aged now, a little older. We're both a little older and everything. We're a lot older, but, but 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 I mean, I'll never forget those days standing on the sidelines, you know, and and watching him perform. I mean, it was just it, it was spectacular, and uh, you know, people have all sorts of there's arguments about who's who's the greatest player in Arizona history da, 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 da. well it's it's a, it's Ricky no it's Chuck it's no it's Terry it's actually it's you da, 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 because da, da. you know you and, the, the deck was stacked just, against you just so we're clear he overcame all of it there's no quit what is it five five what five six five sixty six tackles okay because I, I was closer a, to the line of scrimmage he was a four-year starter so he got his in four I got mine in three I was I was only a three-year starter you See, broke there, the lies the, I mean it's pretty very he clear. just couldn't put on weight. He should have more Cheerios. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they wouldn't let me play at 150 pounds. Yeah. You should have that record. <laughs> no, you both are so humble. But our fans have submitted some questions. And the first one I liked because you guys can back up your teams. It's not just about you on this one. Brad asks, what was a bigger win for the program? Hunley's Wildcats taking down the number one USC Trojans on the road in 1981 or Cecil's cats ruining the scummies perfect season in 1986. Wow. Those are two tough ones. Wow. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I don't know. It's one of those things like who's the greatest head coach of all time? You know, it's kind of like, to me, they're both spectacular. Yeah. And I, they're right there together. Uh, uh, me personally, clearly being a part of and the the – Beating up on the scummies. Uh, the fact that he used the scummies. I know, is, I love it. He is, knows is, you so well. It's spectacular. He must, <laughs> what is he? he, he yeah, I mean, he, he must have ESPN. I mean, he dials right into the scummies. I, I love it. Anyway, uh, and that was kind of one of the things that I learned, like from Jump Street, when I, from I, got, when I got here. I didn't even know there were two schools in the state of Arizona. I grew up in California. And, and uh, but uh, Coach Smith, Larry was just, you don't like the team up north. And so I literally was very, uh, that was the way I, I was raised my time here. And so that part of it, I think, trumps everything. But that game that they beat the number one team is, that, you know, that's, it's like you said, you know, that's very I can relate to what I experienced and I experienced that game. The USC was ranked number one in the country, and we had to go to their place and play. They had the Rolling Stones concert the night before, <laughs> so the field stunk because they covered the field with a tarp, the grass. And, and Marcus Allen was getting 200 yards a game. He won the Heisman Trophy that year, mm -hmm. and I think he still got 200 in our game. And then we held him on defense. And at the last minute, Max and Dayhouse kicked the field goal. We went 13 to 10. I can still see the picture mm. on the cover of, of the Tucson Citizens with Julius Holt with his hands up in the air. <laughs> oh, that was a great 13 to 10. That, that, that was an all time great win. We, we had a lot of great wins. You know, uh, we didn't get to go to bowl games when I was here, even though school was on probation. But we, we, we upset Notre Dame at Notre Dame. We beat Iowa 5 to, five to 2, you know. Two field goals and a safety. <laughs> we beat USC when they were number one. We beat UCLA when they were number two and became number one at halftime here. And, uh, you know, it was, a, and, and we upset the scummies twice when they were going to the Rose Bowl. And, uh, you know, and uh, it's uh, a lot of great memories, a lot of great memories. But uh, that USC game, that was one for the ages. <laughs> you guys both had so many great wins here and that kind of leads into a question from brad who asked what was a career changing moment for you at the u of a Ooh, go ahead, uh, here at the u of a i i think it was 
when I was a freshman and uh, I got here, I was like number six on the depth chart. There's a lot of people here. And uh, so I was like 13 and I had a coach, his name was Chuck Amato. And they swear to this man, he used to yell and scream at me so much, I didn't know my right from my left. I can still hear him <laughs> saying, make the Yoki call, make the Yoki call. And I go, okay, right. He said, where's your right? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> And I couldn't get that call out. That's like we were talking about yesterday. Yeah, yeah, like, get yeah, guys, communicate. Just, communicate. just communicate. Just talk, you know. And, boy, I was so scared. But um, I worked my way up to second team by the second game of my freshman year. And we're playing against UCLA. They're number two in the country. Alabama lose. UCLA becomes number one. But I had to start. Jack Housley pulled a muscle in his back. He was a starting senior. And in that game, I finished with... 12 tackles and three sacks. I was packed in player of the week and played every game the rest of my career, except for the one where I broke my hand getting in a fight in the locker room before the ASU game. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Cecil, what about you? Is there a play, a moment, a game that you just felt like changed things for you? Oh, golly. Uh, no, but I, I would say it, it's funny because, and we've talked about this, I would say something that stuck with me and motivated me as much or more than anything throughout my career, even going into the NFL, um, was his coach, Coach Rogeman, um, was the linebacker coach, <laughs> Rogi, and who has passed since, uh, God bless him, to say the least. But uh, literally, at my, my freshman year, uh, and again, I'm so, Look, 50, whatever, and and uh, we go down to Camp Cochise, right? And it was where we had camp back in the day down in Douglas. Um, and every day, every day, we would be in stretch, and he would walk down the line, come back and forth, up and down the lines, and every day he would stop while I was stretching, sitting there, and he would look down at me, goes what are you doing here what are you doing here you don't belong are you kidding me look at you y you can't play with these guys you don't belong here come on just go home and it, <laughs> and it used to get oh my god i would literally almost lose my mind and i spent the <laughs> The rest of my freshman year, where I redshirted and and you know played on scout team the whole year, and then, but it motivated me in such a way, there was nothing more in my life that I wanted to do than to prove Coach Rogeman wrong. And the thing is, when I came to find out later and talked to him clearly a little later in my career when I was still playing here and. and he was doing nothing more than pushing my buttons and he knew how to do it and he was very good at it because <laughs> he he got all of my buttons literally on a daily basis and i was just like i mean just hot po'd every day and he would start me off every day of practice like that and it's one of my if you ever met good, coach rogan he, he, he was a master motivator oh my gosh master i mean he could get the nuns ready for a game. I'm telling you, I'll never forget the game. We we're playing at Notre Dame. Okay, now you know his son. He named his son uh, after Nuke Rockney. He had one named Rock and one named Buck. And he there you uh, go. and and one of them actually attended Notre Dame. So to go back to Notre Dame and play, and we're playing at Notre Dame, and halftime he comes in the locker room and he's pacing and he's, you know. Coach Rogier was an ex-Marine and, and he played for the Chicago Bears. And they didn't yeah, have any face man. Like, he was ugly as. He, <laughs> but he, he was I mean, hard he could, he could he get was, you going, boy. Oh and, man! And you come in the locker room and he walks around and everything gets quiet and he's like, "Look at you! Look at you! You can't give a little blood." <laughs> like, you in the house, the Nuke Rockney building. You can't give a little blood. <laughs> I mean, he was, he, was, he, was a drill, he was a drill sergeant. Like, he, oh, he actually, yeah. like, I mean, I'm talking, yeah. like, he was truly military, like, yes uh, uh, yes or no, sir. Like, it was, I mean, he was and, and I've seen him break down some of the greatest players <laughs> ever. 
okay? <laughs> I remember when Vance Johnson came here on his recruiting trip, and he was – no, it was Bill Redman on his recruiting – and he's sitting on his – Equipment in the weight room because Coach Rogie, his first year, was a strength coach. Mm. And I get off my equipment. <laughs> 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 and the week before the Notre Dame game, and you know, I was a fun loving guy. I'm laughing mm. and joking and having a good time. On Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, you could not even speak to Coach Rogie. You hear me? He was just so. And so he walks up to me and he would talk to you in a whisper. When he wanted you to hear what he's saying, he would say, look at you. You think you're going to go up to Notre Dame and, and you're going to just show him your press clippings, Ricky Hundley, <laughs> All-American. All-American, my ass, piss on you, piss on you, piss on you. I was like, <laughs> oh, man, it's crazy. He was nuts, but he would, I'm telling you, every day we start off nine or seven, man, it was like, because Rogie had already got you ready for oh, it. Yeah. It was it was on. It was on and cracking. That's and what, it, I mean, that's what I, it was. But he'd walk down that line. And he'd he walked down that line. And every day in my office, you, just, in, you can see his picture right there on the wall. That's he, my guy. He'd just shake yeah. his head and look at me. He goes, what are you doing what here? Are you doing? Come on. And then he'd just <laughs> keep on going. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I see either of you guys whispering to our guys now, I'll know where you got but, You know what he used to say? <laughs> he'd say, you know. You praise loudly, but you criticize softly. There you, you go. Never let me see a driver again. Yeah. <laughs> well, this was so fun. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this episode of the Wildcat Rundown. I know our fans are going to enjoy hearing about this so much and just stories they probably haven't heard before. So thank you guys so much. <laughs> thank you, McKinney. Thank you, McKinney.